Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at wireless network penetration testing methodologies. So again, you learned the, uh, the fundamentals, uh, the basic types of attack in CEH. So we're gonna review some of the tools for that. We're also gonna talk about some considerations that we didn't talk about in CEH that you may run into. We'll give you an overall, at least starting methodology on that. All right, so our module objectives, wireless penetration testing, wireless security threats, wireless penetration testing tools, wireless penetration testing steps, introduction to RFID security, RFID penetration testing steps, introduction to NFC or near field communication security, NFC penetration testing steps, introduction to IoT or Internet of Things devices security, and then IoT penetration testing steps. Now again, we're not gonna get into the specifics of the tools so much uh, with the RFID, the NFC, uh, or the IoT. Uh, we're going to liken those to other types of connected devices. We're gonna give you at least a starting methodology so if you run into those situations, you'll have an initial framework to, to uh, refer back to um, to highlight how to get started. All right, so wireless penetration testing, lots of wireless out there. Uh, lots of insecure wireless out there as well. Lots of wireless activity at public places, et cetera. So wireless is it's an awful lot of fun. Um, and it is amazing how easy it is to set up an impersonation type of attack and get somebody to connect to your wireless access point, free public Wi-Fi. People just flock to it like moths to a flame. So wireless security threats unauthorized or authorized users with the knowledge of system resources and security flaws can commit fraud and theft to gain network access. All right, so a couple things to consider on the wireless. The actual data that is traversing the airwaves and then actually interacting with other devices on the network. So am I gaining access to it, actually intruding on the network, or am I just eavesdropping or intercepting? So sort of two main categories on that. Once I'm on the network, now I've got you know, all the other types of sniffing, packet capturing attacks, impersonation attacks um, that can perform a wired network. So a wireless security threats, uh, we're gonna start off with some wireless pen testing tools. All right, now the Aircrack NG suite you should definitely be familiar with at this point. This is the reference standard for wireless attacking utilities and pretty much most of your uh, wireless tools are, are based off of this suite. So Aircrack NG, typically you're gonna probably be working with Aircrack more in your Linux environments, Kali environments and so forth. It's also ported over to Windows. But remember then Windows, we've got a much shorter range of possibilities hardware wise, a much smaller range. Uh, very few uh, choices in the grand scheme of things as compared to like a Linux environment. So generally in Windows, you're talking about a couple of supported chipsets using like OmniPeak uh, or an AirPeak app adapter. Uh, which definitely uh, is, a, is a useful piece of hardware and um, you can use that in conjunction with Kane or Aircrack that is ported over to, uh, to the Windows environment, Elcomsoft, Security Auditor, a lot of those utilities require that. Get into the Linux side, we've got a little more flexibility uh, and a lot of times, um, you know, a lot less costly. Uh, generally, an alpha card uh, is, is, a, is a good choice. There's a couple versions of that, the, a, the uh, 036H, the NH, uh, and a couple other variations of that, but you can't go wrong with the alpha card. But anyway, this Aircrack NG suite, you gotta, um, you should know this from CEH, um, you can you know, fire off the utilities individually, or you can use like the AeroScript, which I like to use. Um, actually, I'll still use like a BT4 machine with AeroScript, just because I like the interface that menu drives the whole thing. So you should be familiar with Aircrack NG and you should also be familiar with Kismet. Uh, so Kismet, does a lot of different things, uh, but it is a fantastic discovery utility, uh, without a doubt. And there are lots of site surveying utilities you can choose from. Basically, really anything that detects the beacon frames can be used for you know, access point um, surveying or assessment. The actual you know, injection and attacks um, is gonna require uh, a little bit more dedicated tools so we like Aircrack for, for that. So you should know all this from CEH, uh, Air Defense, uh, we had to do some wireless intrusion detection systems. We talked about those in CH as well. Uh, and then our wireless penetration testing steps. So you should know how to do all this from CEH. So again, we're gonna go through um, the individual steps. Uh, some things that you may did, maybe didn't do directly in CH, we'll talk about that a bit. So discovering wireless networks, let's just roll right into the steps. All right, so discovery. Uh, really, like I said, any you know, war driving utility, any you know, client, uh, we'll show you wireless networks. Now, if they're hidden networks, they're not displaying the SSID, some of your wireless clients, your wireless utilities will say, hey, there's a hidden network there. Some of them won't. 
Um, and then if you want to discover the SSID, generally you just wait for an association on that. All right, so discover the wireless networks using a, uh, you may have a GPS receiver uh, for serving large areas. That's really more for the mapping side of things. All right, Net Surveyor, Wireless Mon, uh, Vis Stumbler, Wi Fi Hopper, Air Radar, Aero Dump, Well and Rider, lots of them. All right, so detecting hidden uh, SSIDs. Remember, security set identifier may or may not be transferred, transmitted in the beacon frame of the, um, of the, the, the beacons. Uh, which are sent out 10 times per second. If it's not in that uh, series of beacon frames, then just basically wait for an association. So uh, run Airmon and G in monitor mode, and this is all stuff that you should have seen in CEH, be familiar with, so we're just kind of re re, uh, refreshing that. Check the physical security of the AP. All right, so if I can get physical access to the access point, I can jack in to a, you know, a switch port on the access point and now I've got physical access and I don't have to worry about actually connecting to the wireless network. So checking physical security of AP. Uh, detecting wireless connections, active or passive. Passive, again, just listening. Active, actually sending out broadcast probes, uh, probe request frame. All access points within range are supposed to respond back to that. And again, that's all, uh, that's all old knowledge from CEH. Just kind of refreshing here a little bit. So, all right, in an SSID here. Sniff traffic between the AP and link devices. <laughs> for what? Well, anything interesting. So look for passwords, other sensitive data. Wireshark. Uh, Wireshark, remember that um, Wireshark in Windows, if you want to listen in monitor mode, you need a monitor mode adapter, and that means they're PCAP. Uh, Wireshark in your Linux environments, generally just put an adapter in mon monitor mode uh, using, uh, using uh, Airmon. Uh, and um, uh, pop it into monitor mode and they just use the mon mode adapter. All right, OmniPeak. I'm uh, gonna pay a little bit for the interface or for the, for the software, but it does give you a little bit more flexibility in selection on the cards. So that's something a little bit notable with OmniPeak. Common view for Wi-Fi, and again, we're just sort of in tool, tool mode here. All right, create ad hoc associations with an unsecured AP or unsecured client. So clients that have an ad hoc listener, you could establish a direct point-to-point -point connection. And this is again, one of the, the connection options that we talked about in CEH. Create a rogue access point and uh, try to connect a promiscuous client. If you stand it up, they will come. Absolutely. Um, been in <laughs> lots of situations where I'll stand up an access point for my own personal use. Uh, maybe I don't apply a password to it. Maybe I'm just curious. And it, it's like, you know, flock into a flame. So uh, free public Wi-Fi, mimicking the SSID of the target organization. And these are, again, all uh, considerations that we talked about in CH. Use a wireless honeypot. Uh, discover uh, uh, email, I'm sorry, discover vulnerable wireless clients. So again, fake wireless AP is really kind of the same thing as a rogue access point. You know, we have lots of different man-in-the-middle attacks. Uh, Wi-Fi Pineapple is fantastic for setting up these, uh, these impersonation types of attacks. And then try to capture any email or FTP connections, users' file shares, et cetera. All right, denial of service, deauth floods. So we talked about those in CEH. Deauth frames force a client to deauthenticate from the access point, And you can just keep hammering them over and over and over again. Sending those deauth frames, there's really not a lot that you can do to stop that. Um, the uh, deauthentication attack uh, or deauth floods can be sent and just repeatedly kick them off. Now the clients will reassociate, but um, you know you just keep transmitting. Uh, you're impersonating the legitimate access point, so that definitely is kind of a unique flavor denial service for wireless. Temp rapid traffic generation. This is just referring to the injection of IVs using air replay, typically to collect uh, an, a, a, a sufficient number of interesting IVs to crack a web key. All right, and then jam the signal. Um, you know I. Can't say that I've ever used a signal jammer. Uh, you know, you pick one up off of Amazon, but I mean, there's some legal considerations with this, um, but I've never actually, you know, physically jammed the frequency. But all you're doing there is you are consuming um, the carrier signal. Uh, it's a, it's an annou a uh, CSMA CA, which has an, an, uh, announces an intent to send or listen to the signal before it transmits. Jamming the signal just sort of locks up and, and jams the frequency. So you can actually pick these up off of Amazon or, or other sites as well. So you may choose to jam the signal. Uh, Wi-Fi jamming devices. Okay, this should look a little familiar. It's a pretty similar slide to what we had in CEH. Uh, single packet decryption. You know, we didn't really necessarily reference this directly in CEH. Um, there's, there, uh, we, we talked, we list the chop-chop attack as one of the attacks. 
But a chop shop, you're actually decrypting the web data packets without actually cracking the key. So it's a little bit weird in the fact that you're